Okay, guys. Uh, this is what we've got going on. Building <clears throat> my wing cores. Or cutting my wing cores out of uh, three-quarter inch foam from Lowe's. I decided to go with something that was a little bit more masculine instead of the pink stuff like last time. And there's the pink one from last time. It's still... Uh, uh, beat the hell up. It's in my scrap pile. <laughs> um, anyway, so this is the idea I had this time. Um, gonna do two sections of wing. One on top of the other to sandwich the wing spar, which I'm going to run down the center. A, uh, hot, um, uh, soldering iron. Run it down the center using a straight edge here. And, um, uh, that's going to give me my ditch for my, yeah, these are going to be my uh, wing spars, carbon fiber arrow shafts. I was hoping to go with uh, aluminum tubing with this one, but it turned out these uh, arrow shafts seem to have been about the same price as getting some aluminum tubing, and they're almost the perfect size see it after it's butted up to the end here you're looking at like maybe an inch and a half overlay there of course I'm gonna have to pull the fletchings off all that good stuff but uh, anyways I saw a video on YouTube I can't remember uh, what the guy's name was um, but I got the idea to use Dollar Tree foam board with an aluminum foil tape. Now, I know this is going to take some of the heat away from the uh, hot wire foam cutter, but it seems to have worked just fine. Um, this is my second wing. I've still got some sanding to do on it, but just want to show you guys that. And I'm using toothpicks here to pin it down. I know it's kind of ghetto, but kind of trying to rush this project hence the mess over here didn't even have a chance to clean my area before I started my project I've been working uh, really really strict hours here lately so whenever I have time to work on this which actually this is Christmas day but we did our Christmas last weekend when the kids were here alright gonna use our little ditch witch to make a groove for the wing spar here. Um, I probably got this a little bit too hot, but we'll see how this works. Probably gonna have to go through it a couple of times. I should have used a wider piece. This will allow it to all lay down nicely when it's glued, but the top portion won't rise up. And I've got this marked evenly with the other wing, so these wing spars will be, hopefully will match up. I don't, at this moment, plan to make it to where they join together um, I probably will have to otherwise it's gonna not be 100% uh, hey guys the uh, other plane I built that was just like this except it didn't have the inverted detail um, that was a prototype of what I was wanting to do, and here it is. Uh, I've got a few other things I'm going to need to do to it. Uh, once I'm sure it'll fly, I have not maidened it yet. I'm going to cut out access points for uh, the battery to lay in and all the electronics. Uh, this right here is just a bunch of burnt up uh, brushed motors from an old helicopter I had. Uh, they're just for counterbalance the 
this thing needs some serious weight in the nose, which I guess is kind of a good thing because I plan on going with a, a 4,500 milliamp hour three cell if it flies well on a three cell. Um, but the things I've done different on this one that I should have done on the last one is um, the wing core is much, much deeper. Uh, the wing is thicker. Um, the other one, uh, because the wings were as thin as they were and the carbon fiber rod I used was a little bit anemic, um, it, the wings just kind of flapped in the air like a bird. Um, this one's using carbon fiber arrow shafts. I hated cutting the fletchings off of it because I used to shoot uh, archery myself and it was kind of heartbreaking to tear up a brand new good arrow. But anyway, so uh, yeah, you can see actually that's the end of the carbon fiber arrow shaft. Uh, we're looking at roughly about, um, I believe it's about a five and a quarter foot wingspan. So something like five foot, uh, three inches, roughly. Um, right now I've got on here a 3,000 milliamp hour three cell with a 30C discharge. And we're running a 2200 kV uh, mystery brand motor. And the um, motor is at A2217. And it's supposed to be able to handle a three cell or a four cell. I have tried putting a four cell on this before I got the wings all put on here just to see the kick. And um, it's got a, a lot of power to four cell, as you would imagine. Um, I think a three cell would be just fine. It, it would be nice though to fly it with a four cell. All you other RC enthusiasts know what I'm talking about. Um, but it got hot really hot with a four cell of course it wasn't moving in the air but with this being a pusher prop it doesn't really have any access to air back here so later on i'm actually going to build almost like an air ram uh, either on the top or on both sides it's going to scoop some of the air to the bottom of the engine where it's mounted at to uh, to give it some cooling properties and we're running an eight by four speed prop and uh, let me show you that, how that V-tail is looking. Okay. And so the reason why I went with inverted V-tail instead of your traditional V-tail, um, I've never had a V-tail set up on a plane. Uh, so I did some research on it, and it turns out with the V-tail sitting like this, it actually has a counter uh, roll effect when you use the rudder. Uh, when you use the rudder, it, it almost, the back end of the plane wants to go to the left when you use left rudder, but the right wing, from what I understand, wants to drop. Now, I could be wrong about that. Uh, my research was kind of limited. There really isn't a whole lot on YouTube, believe it or not, on uh, the characteristics of the way a V-tail responds. But, uh, okay, so we're going to go ahead and take it apart here in just a minute, and I'm going to show you guys how easy this comes apart. And I hope you guys build something like this and post it in the comments. I'd love to see what you guys do. It gives me ideas and uh, it may give me ideas on how to improve something like this. Um, the electronics, uh, using Spectrum, this is a uh, AR6100E receiver. I've got dozens of them. I know it's kind of a no-no to have this so close to um, all these wires. The, the antennas are going to have major interference. But like I said, this is just kind of... Just to see if this thing will fly, I'm pretty sure it's not going to brown out. I still may move some stuff, but we're running a uh, 40 amp uh, Simon speed controller made by Emacs. Um, it seems to work wonders on it. Uh, when I put a four cell in there, it does get a little bit hot, but uh, like I said before, it was not in the air, so um, I really don't know how it will do with a four cell with that speed controller. I've 
a lot of the other planes what I'll do is I'll cut the insulation around it and let the heat sink um, get to the bare air and I'll always even uh, when I cut out the um, <clears throat> the canopy and install stuff down in the foam the um, speed controller is going to stay on top for maximum air current keeping it cool that sort of thing um, all right so we're going to show you how easy it is to tear this thing apart um, I wanted it where I could take it apart and put it in the car as everybody does so that they can take it to their buddies and show it off to their buddies and stuff um, but I didn't realize it was going to be as modular as it is so it turned out better than what I planned on so just to uh, let me go ahead and turn this stuff off unplug it just don't want that motor coming on my hands back here okay so all you have to do is just disconnect these servo extensions for the tail and then flip it around just flip it around and there you go tail comes off that simple folds up right up against each other really snug um, also this uh, V-tail I've made it out of the uh, I think they call it Depron it's the Dollar Tree foam board um, I just cut the uh, the center where I wanted to bend that at 45 degree angles on each side and uh, left the, the paper on the back side so that way when it folds over it's got something to you know keep its arch nice okay so that's the tail and let's see here's my hobby knife right now I've just got tape on it uh, later on I plan on getting some uh, uh, nylon uh, nuts and screws actually a buddy of mine um, Pierre gave me some nylon nuts with, with screws. Um, I'll probably end up just using that later on, but like I said, before I go through the trouble of doing the extra mile on it, I want to make sure it flies. So, alright. And I know a lot of people, um, when they build a hatch like this, they put it on the top when they go to drop a wing in they usually do it from the top but my theory is if the weight is all on the wing then if this plug was to come loose if it's on the top your whole wing is going to come off with it and your plane is going to hit the dirt but if it's on the bottom and it comes loose then you know you got the force of the air keeping it up you can still bring it in for a landing and then go find your plug that fell out hopefully that'll never happen but okay so here's the wing assembly if you can come in a little closer um, I've got two pieces of um, Dollar Tree foam board at the trailing edge of the wing to, uh, to kick the wings forward so they are actually forward swept it's a little bit tough to tell unless you get down close and you really know what to look for but I'm sure you can tell it now and anyways to take apart the wing you just unplug the splitter or Y connector for the servos and I've got tape down here too I don't know what I'm going to substitute that for to keep the wings close together uh, I may just keep using tape. It's cheap, effective. And there we go. The wings come off just like so. Put your plug back on there. Make sure you get it on the right direction. And of course, later on, I'm going to put all the electronics except for the speed controller down in the airplane. This is just temporary. Hold that up. And 
drop this in there. One here. And then look at that. Run you some rubber bands around it, around here or something, you know, and just toss it in the trunk, in the back seat, or even in the passenger seat. I mean, look at that. That's almost a six foot wingspan plane, just like that. You know, these, uh, these Spectre designs, uh, I don't know who it was that came up with the, uh, um, the first design. I know Alex Greaves, um, or Alex Greaves, I hope I'm saying his name right. Um, I know he came out with a, a version of this uh, with forward swept swings. That's pretty much where I got my idea from. Um, it's a great design. The body doesn't have to be very long. You know, you just got the tail booms. You can make those where they pop off just like I did. And this, this thing becomes very modular. Comes apart. Very simple. Okay. Um, I think that'll be all for this video. Stay tuned for uh, my flight video.